Okay, folks. So this is going to be my first lecture of the day, um, of the week. And we're going to talk about the material at the beginning of chapter six, which chapter six is about applications of integration. So let me get started by sharing my screen and we will get to work. Okay, so uh, I wanna talk about area between curves. So that's section 6.1. Okay, so what's this about? So you have two curves in the plane is my plane and here are my two curves maybe this is called uh, this is the graph of the function f of x and this is a graph of another function say g of x and we're going to assume for now that f of x is at least g of x on the interval that we are considering, which will be say a, b. So we're, this is on the interval a, b. And uh, what I want to do is uh, compute the area, which is of this region between the curves, between the values of x between a and b. So here are the values in question indicated so the shaded region which i'm trying to shade not very effectively okay so how do we do that let me erase the shading because that's just really in the way so let's go back to our uh, so this will be f of x now Okay, so what do we do? So in calculus, we take little strips of a certain width, uh, and the width will be delta x, which we're gonna take delta x going to zero. So we can try to estimate the portion of the area in, in that strip, and that's base times height. So the area of a strip is roughly equal to, uh, so if this point here is, we give it a name, let's call it x sub i. So then it would be uh, the base, which is delta x times the height. Now the height is, the, is f of x with g of f, x subtracted. So it would be f of x minus g of x i times delta x. Let me redraw that. It doesn't look good. So now we cover the region between A and B with strips and we sum up over all the areas of all the strips. We get a sum. It's a Riemann sum. It'll be the sum over f of x i minus g of x i times delta x. And suppose we have n strips, so i is going to go from 1 to n. So that is an estimate of the area between the curves. That's just an estimate because these strips are not exactly rectangles. Their, their edges are approximately uh, straight, but not they're not generally straight. So this is just an estimate. So what we do is by making delta x small, we take delta x going to zero. That means we have to cover it with more strips, obviously. We get, which leads to the area is being equal to the integral from a to b of the definite integral of f of x minus g of x dx. And this is under the assumption 
that this basic assumption here. Okay, so uh, that's that's number one. So the question is: is what happens? What if? What if f of x is isn't always greater than or equal to g of x on the interval a b? What do we do then? Well, let's draw a picture. Let me draw a simplified picture. So suppose this is our f of x and this is our g of x. So f will be here and g of x will be here. And suppose a, b, maybe this is a and this is b. So we see like there's really only, there's one place where the situation changes. Let's call that point c in this simplified picture. So here, we have f of x as being, here's f and here's g, but here we have g and f is below g. So what we could do is break it up into two separate regions, the places where f is bigger than g and where the places where g is bigger than f. And we see that we get the area, area is add. So the area is the integral from a to c of f of x minus g of x dx plus the integral from c to, to b of g of x minus f of x, since g is bigger than f on, on the interval from c to b dx. So now we can rewrite this in the following way. F of, we could think of it in the following way. We could think, since f of x is bigger than g of x, bigger than or equal to g of x, on the interval from a to c, we can replace, it's the same thing as the difference of the absolute values absolute value of the difference, I should say. And likewise, from C to B, we have G of X is bigger than or equal to F of X. So we get, it's the same as the difference of the absolute values, the absolute value of the difference. And so we get this, okay. And uh, now the definite integral has this property. If you integrate from A to C a certain function, and you integrate from C to B the same function because this is the same function, even though they're written in, in the opposite way, you get the same function because we're taking the absolute value. It's the same as the integral from A to B of F of X minus G of X DX. So this is the general formula with no assumptions, except that we're assuming that f of x and g of x are continuous, so the Riemann integrals are defined on a, b. Okay, so that is uh, the story with, uh, with, um, with the general formula, and now what I'm gonna do for the rest of this lecture is do some computations. So uh, let me uh, let me do that. So okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the screen and we'll do some problems for the rest of the lecture. So let me clear. Just the thing we have to remember is this second formula in the box. But in practice, you'll never have to deal with absolute values because we're going to do everything in terms of where f is bigger than g and where g is bigger than f, as you'll see. So let me clear the screen and we'll do a problem. Okay, so let's start off with a simple problem. Uh, let's start off with find the area between the straight line y equals x and the parabola y equals x squared for zero less than or equal to x is less than or equal to one. So let, it's always good to draw a picture and that's what I'm gonna do. So with between zero and one, so we're gonna just do the first quadrant. So that's y equals x squared, the portion of it in the first quadrant that is. And this is y equals x. And they intersect in two places at one, one and zero, zero. And the region in question is this region here. 
Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, a vertical strip that we draw, the f of x would be x and the g of x would be x squared. So you're gonna get the integral from zero to one of x minus x squared dx. x squared is smaller than x when x is between zero and one. And so we integrate this in the usual way by finding, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we find the antiderivative. So you get x squared over two minus x cubed over three from x equals zero to x equals one. So it's a half minus a third minus, that's evaluation at one, evaluation at zero is zero. So that gives me a value of one sixth. So this area has, is, is an area of one sixth. Okay, so that's the first question that I want, the first exercise I want to do. And let's do, uh, let's do uh, another exercise. Um, let's try the following. Uh, let's try, uh, let's try an example of the following form. Y equals sine X and y equals cosine of x, where x is varying between zero and pi over two. So this is the sine curve between zero and pi over two. It's, it's a wave, it goes like this. Pi over two is here. I'll put a dotted line. And then we have the cosine curve, which looks like this, dips down to zero. So this is sine x and this is cosine of x, and they meet at pi over four, at x equals pi over four. This is the x-axis here. So we're gonna get for the area, it's the integral from zero, x equals zero to x equals pi over four of cosine x, because that's on the top, minus sine x dx plus the integral from pi over four to pi over two of the sine x minus cosine of x dx. And what is that? Well, the antiderivative of cosine x is sine x, and the antiderivative of sine x is minus cosine x, so you're gonna get a change in sine because the derivative of plus cosine x is minus sine x. And this is being evaluated from x equals zero to x equals pi over four. And then the other uh, definite integral is gonna give me negative cosine x minus sine of x from pi over four to pi over two. And now we go, we are going to evaluate each of these expressions. So sine pi, let's evaluate at pi over four. So you're gonna get radical two over two plus radical two over two. That's the evaluation of sine x and cosine x at pi over four. And the evaluation at zero gives zero plus one. And then now we evaluate the second expression. We get negative zero, which is just zero minus one minus uh, negative uh, square root of two over two minus square root of two over two. And if you work this out and you do the arithmetic, you should get twice the square root of two minus two as the final answer. And that is the final answer to this question. Okay, great. Okay, so we've done two problems thus far. And my next problem is an example from the book. Uh, let me clear the screen. And uh, consider, uh, this is example seven on page 433. Taking this directly out of the book, find the area between y equals x minus one, that's a straight line, and y squared, when I say between bounded by, I mean equals two x plus six. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So uh, let's graph again, always good to graph. 
So here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis. Y equals x minus one is a line of slope one with y intercept minus one. So that's that line. And then y squared equals two x plus six. You, if you rewrite it like this as x equals y squared over two uh, minus three, solve for x, you'll see that this is a parabola. It looks like cover the three, you get y squared over two. So that's sort of like a parabola that's uh, whose nose is horizontal and goes through the origin, but now we're subtracting three, so it goes three units, so it goes like this. So we're going to need to know these intersection points at some point because we have to find the area of this region I'm indicating by moving my cursor up and down. Okay, so we can solve the way to get those intersection points is. We can, um, we can set the equations equal in the following way. We know that y is x minus one. So if we substitute, let's work in the corner here. Uh, for y, x minus one, we get x minus one squared equals two x plus six. So you're just doing the substitution to the first equation. Then we get x squared minus two x plus one equals two x plus six. So we're going to get x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. And we get x uh, minus uh, 5 x plus 1. I've just factored it equals 0. So x is two possible values, minus 1 or 5. And if you stick it in, solve for y, we see that when x is minus 1, uh, that, then y must be minus 2 because y is x minus 1. And the other point is going to be uh, 5, 4. So those are the two intersection points. Now, if I were to solve this problem in the usual way, vertically, by taking vertical strips, we run into a problem. The problem is, is this, is we took a strip like that we see that the strip, the rectangular strip, would touch the same curve, the parabola, in two different places. Whereas if we took the strip over here, it would touch the line in the parabola. So this is not an easy problem to do if we look at it from the point of view of the variable x. So what I propose to do is switch variables. Think of this as a problem in terms of y. So we take a strip of thickness delta y instead and compute its uh, height. And we're going to get an integral from that, right? So what is it? So the top of the strip is going to be given by the straight line and the bottom is the parabola. So what do we get? So now y is varying between minus 2 and 4. And the strip, it's going to be a delta y becomes a dy. And what is the height of the strip? Well, it's, it's the, it's, uh, the straight line, which is uh, x, e we have to express x in terms of y. So x equals y plus 1, I believe. So it's y plus 1 minus the parabola, which is y squared over 2 minus 3 dy. OK, so we, we now we uh, just solve the problem in the usual way. So we get the integral from minus 2 to 4 of negative, if we simplify, we get negative y squared over two plus y plus four dy. Um, and then we get minus y cubed over six plus y squared over two uh, plus four y. I've taken the antiderivatives from minus two to four. And we can substitute the values. We get negative, if we put, stick in the four, we get negative 64 over six plus 16 over two plus 16 minus uh, negative um, eight over six plus uh, uh, two square, negative two squared is four, so four halves minus eight 
and you can do the arithmetic yourself, you should get 18 as the solution, as in the book. So that is the solution to that exercise in the book. The example, I should say it's an example. Okay. All right, so that is our third example. Um, and as a final example, I'm gonna do something from uh, the exercises. And by the way, I should have the first homework assignment up by the end of the week, and you'll have about a week to do it, just to let you know. Okay, uh, let's see. So let me clear the screen. And now I'm going to do uh, ex exercise number 33, 33 uh, uh, in the homework section of the book. So uh, what is it? So it gives you the vertices of a triangle. And the vertices are this, it's the origin, zero, zero. It's the three, one, which is somewhere near here. And it's the point one, two. So that's somewhere near here. So they determine a triangle. Here's our triangle. And we're supposed to compute the area of the triangle using calculus. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna split it up into two pieces and note that, let me put a dotted line here, that areas will add. So we can compute the area to the left of the dotted segment and then compute the area to the right of the dotted segment. Now, in order to compute that, we're gonna to need to know the legs. So let's call this leg one, leg two, and leg three of the triangle. So leg one, that is, uh, if we, we can compute this, this is a segment that goes to the origin and its slope is, is two. So it's given by y equals two x, but there are restrictions on what x can be. X is between zero and one, because uh, look at the coordinates, the, the x coordinates of these points is between zero and one. Similarly, we have the legs. The other legs you can compute very easily. For example, the last leg has slope a third. That's one third x. And x is going from zero to three. And uh, uh, and the the leg leg two is a little more complicated because it doesn't go through the origin, but its slope is minus a half. You can easily compute the slope. And then by compute the intercept by sticking in one of these points. And, and if you do it right, you'll get five halves. Uh, and X is between one and three. Okay, that's a fly. Okay, so now I wanna compute the area. So let's call this region one and this region two. So region one has area, um, given by the integral from zero to one of the uh, leg one minus leg three, right? So it would be two X minus X over three DX. And uh, so we're gonna, and region two is the integral from one to three, I guess, of uh, leg two minus leg three, so it's negative a half x uh, plus five halves dx. Uh, so we're going to add the, we're going to compute these things separately. So the first integral is uh, the integral from zero to one of five uh, thirds x dx. So we're going to get five sixths x squared from zero to one, and that's five sixths. So that's the, that's the area of region one. And the area of region two is, is, is given by computing this, the, this integral, and you're gonna get, you're gonna get um, negative, uh, uh, did I do this right? I think I did this right. Oops, I made a mistake. Ah, I, made, I caught myself in a mistake. So let me erase, I didn't do this right. So I have to subtract off, uh, I have to subtract off something. So it's gonna be minus a third X cause it's L2 minus L3, I didn't subtract the L3. So let me go back 
and subtract off the L3 one third X. So this is the integral from zero, one to three. Oops. One to three of what? Of, of five halves minus five sixths X dx. I've simplified the integrand here, and there's a dx here that I've left out. Okay, so now what is that? That's 5 halves x minus 5 twelfths x squared. And that's from 1 to 3. And we can uh, compute what we get from that. So r1, let's let me write r1 plus r2 is therefore equal to 5 sixths plus, let me evaluate this here, we get, um, if we evaluate at three, we get five halves times three. So it's 15 halves minus 45 twelfths. Uh, and then we have to subtract off the value at one. So that's five halves minus five twelfths. And the simplific you can do the simplification yourself. It if you do this, work this out, there's a lot of cancellation. You'll get five minus five halves, which is five halves. So the answer is five halves. And uh, that is it for the lecture, for the, our first lecture today. Um, I will uh, post this as soon as possible on YouTube and I'll send, put the link on Canvas. Great. Okay, see you later.